Hi students, um, this reading video is to go along with our week two um, distance English packets so you can follow along with your printed reading homework and listen to my pronunciation. Mark any vocabulary that you are unsure about. Um, leave any questions in the comments below the video. Students who are not in my distance English, you can still listen to this video um, just in your notebook, write down any new vocabulary and ask any questions in the comments below. This article is titled, Nations Must Cut Beef Consumption in Order to Keep the World Fed. This is an article from The Guardian newspaper out of England written and published on December 14th, 2018. A new report says people need to make a change. It suggests that humans eat less beef and lamb. The world's population is growing. It will reach 10 billion people, likely in the next 20 years. By this time, people in rich nations will have to make big cuts to the amount of beef and lamb they eat if everyone is to be fed, the report says. These cuts and a series of other measures are also needed to prevent destructive climate change, it adds. More than 50% more food will be needed by 2050, according to the World Resources Institute, WRI, report. However, greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture will have to fall by two-thirds at the same time. The extra food will have to be produced without creating new farmland, it says, or the world's remaining forests face destruction. Meat and dairy production use 83% of farmland and produce 60% of agriculture's total greenhouse gas emissions. Greenhouse gases cause global warming, scientists say. Increasing the amount of food produced was the most critical step, the experts said. After that, they recommended cutting down on meat eating and stopping food waste. One third of the food produced around the world is currently wasted. How we produce and consume food must change. We have to change how we produce and consume food, not just for environmental reasons, but because this threatens human existence said Janet Ragnathan. She is the Vice President for Science and Research at the WRI. Tim Searchinger of the WRI and Princeton, Princeton University said, if we tried to produce all the food needed in 2050 using today's production systems, the world would have to convert most of its remaining forest to farmland. Agriculture alone, he said, would produce almost twice the emissions allowable from all human activities. The new report was launched at the United Nations UN Climate Summit, Summit in Katowice, Poland. It follows other major scientific analysis about the subject. These reports show that huge reductions in meat eating are essential to avoid dangerous climate change. Another found that avoiding meat and dairy products was the single biggest way to reduce an individual person's environmental damage to the planet. It would help slow the great loss of wildlife, too. The world's science academies concluded last week that the global food system was broken. It's leaving billions of people either underfed or overweight and driving dangerous global warming. Another new report concluded that the global food system required radical transformation if climate change and development goals were to be met. This would need to include a widespread change in diet. Cutting beef and lamb by 40%. The WRI report focuses on meat from cattle and sheep. Their digestion process produces methane, a powerful greenhouse gas. Beef provided 3% of the calories in the diet of U.S. citizens, but was responsible for half the emissions, the WRI said. The report recommends that 2 billion people across many countries, including the U.S., Russia, and Brazil, cut their beef and lamb eating by 40%. This would limit it to 1.5 servings a week on average. 
most of the world's citizens would continue to eat relatively little beef in the WRI scenario. Still, Sochinger said, the world's poor people are entitled to consume at least a little more. The 40% decrease is a smaller cut than other studies have called for. We think that is a realistic goal, he said. In the U.S. and Europe, beef consumption has already been reduced by one-third from the 1960s until today. Tobias Beidecker is an official for the World Bank, an international group that works to reduce poverty. He said farmers would require greater support to make the changes required. Still, he said that changing how the world's governments spend money on farmers could be a game changer. Making changes in farming. Governments give more than $590 billion a year to farmers in 51 nations, representing two-thirds of global food output. That's according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, a group of over 30 countries that work together on trade. In the U.S., this money from the government cuts the price of beef by half, the WRI says. Advertising about the problem could help change people's diets, said Raganathan. Also, governments could encourage less consumption of meat in schools, hospitals, and other public institutions. There are other changes to farming that are needed, according to the WRI. These include using better feed to reduce methane production from cows, limiting biofuels made from food crops, managing manure and fertilizer in better ways, and cutting energy use by farm machinery. The report also said that the overall demand for food could be cut. Policies could be put in place to help slow population growth as well. In some places, the population is growing too quickly. More access to education and healthcare for women in these places can help. The WRI report was launched at the UN Climate Summit in Poland. Almost 200 nations are meeting there aiming to make goals to cut greenhouse gas emissions into reality. The rapid increase of action is another key goal. Climate action must be increased by five times to limit warming to a livable level for the future, according to the UN and scientists. How was this story for you? I hope you have found some new vocabulary. Please ask any questions in the comments under the video Send me a question through Messenger or WhatsApp if you are connected in my English distance class. Until next time, students. Bye.